afraid your plexus are two words that are guaranteed to put fear into anybody studying for an anatomy exam is probably the worst subject that could come up in a viva. But hopefully I'll be able to make this a little bit simpler for you because in this tutorial from thefunkyprofessor.com I'm going to give you all of my mnemonics and all of my little tricks to help me remember what each does. Now the brachial plexus is formed by the union of the ventral aspect or the ventral rami of nerve roots C5, C6, C7, C8 and T1. There are different sections of the brachial plexus and these are the roots, the trunks, the divisions and cords. Now this can be confusing so I have the mnemonic. Read the details carefully. Read R is for roots. The T is for trunks, details D divisions, and carefully C is chords. Now how many of each? Well think of the numbers 5363. That's 5363. Five roots, three trunks, six divisions, and three chords. Now the roots lie in the interval between the muscles scalenus anterior and scalenus medius. The trunks pass through the posterior triangle of the neck. The divisions are behind the clavicle and the cords are in the axilla. So anything above the clavicle, i.e. the roots and the trunks are supraclavicular and anything below, which is the cords, are infraclavicular. So how do we get from the roots to the cords? The top two roots unite to form the upper trunk. The bottom two roots unite to form the lower trunk. So that C5 and C6 form the upper trunk, C8 and T1 form the lower trunk, and C7 is just fine, thank you very much, on its own. As soon as the trunks are formed, upper, middle and lower, each of them split. They give anterior divisions and posterior divisions. So there are six, three anterior divisions and three posterior divisions. Now all of the posterior divisions unite and this forms the posterior cord. The upper two anterior divisions unite to form the lateral cord and the anterior division of the lower trunk carries on on its own to form the medial cord. So that's how we get from roots to cords. The cords are so called lateral, posterior and medial because of their relationship to the axillary artery which means to say the lateral cord lies lateral to the axillary artery, the posterior cord posterior to the axillary artery, and the medial cord medial to the axillary artery. The brachial plexus has a number of branches. There are three main branches that are given off at the root level. The first one is the dorsal scapular nerve, which is derived from C5. The dorsal scapular nerve supplies three muscles on the back of the trunk. These are the levator scapulae, rhomboid minor and rhomboid major. C5 also gives a contribution to the phrenic nerve. Now the phrenic nerve supplies the diaphragm. If you remember the mnemonic, C345 keeps the diaphragm alive. Well there you go, there's the contribution from C5. The third branch is the long thoracic nerve of Bell, which is C5, C6, C7. Now this nerve is named after Charles Bell, who was the first professor of anatomy at the Royal College of Surgeons of England. Now moving on to the trunks, the upper trunk is the only trunk that gives off branches. So it's the superior trunk and I guess it probably is superior because it gives off branches. So the first of these branches is the suprascapular nerve and this nerve supplies two of the four rotator cuff muscles, supraspinatus and infraspinatus. The other nerve that comes off the upper trunk is always forgotten and this is the nerve to subclavius. The divisions of the brachial plexus don't have any branches at all, thank goodness. So now we're on to the cords. There are three cords, as you'll remember. Starting from top is the lateral, then the posterior and the medial. And they have three branches, five branches and five branches respectively, three, five, five. Now how to remember that order, lateral, posterior and medial? Well, I have another mnemonic. Love, playmate. Love, L is for lateral. Play, P is for posterior, and mate, M, is for medial. Love, playmate. The three branches of the lateral cord of the brachial plexus are the lateral pectoral nerve, the musculocutaneous nerve, and the contribution 
to the median nerve that comes from the lateral cord. So that's the lateral pectoral nerve, the musculocutaneous nerve, and the contribution from the lateral cord to the median nerve. There are five branches that come off the posterior cord. Now I have a mnemonic for this, which is STARS. That's S-T-A-R-S, -S, STARS. So, STARS begins and ends with an S, which reminds me that there is the upper and the lower subscapular nerves, which supplies subscapularis and teres major. T in STARS is for thoracodorsal nerve, which supplies the latissimus dorsi, that big broad muscle on the back of the trunk. A is for axillary, which supplies the deltoid and teres minor. And R is for the radial nerve. Now the radial nerve supplies all the muscles in the posterior compartment of the arm and the forearm. And it has a major contribution to the cutaneous supply of the posterior aspects of the arm and forearm and hand, and also contributes to the lower lateral aspect of the arm. The final cord, the medial cord, gives off five branches. The first up is the ulnar nerve. Now whenever you think of medial, think ulnar. The other four begin with the letter M. There is the medial cutaneous nerve of the arm, the medial cutaneous nerve of the forearm, the medial pectoral nerve, and the contribution from the medial cord to the median nerve. So there you have it. That is it. That is the entire brachial plexus. So to summarize, the brachial plexus arises from nerve roots level C5, C6, C7, C8, and T1. It has roots, trunks, divisions, and cords. The upper two roots combine to form the upper trunk, the lower two roots combine to form the lower trunk, and C7 goes it alone in the middle, to the middle trunk. Each of these trunks divide into anterior and posterior divisions. All the posterior divisions unite to form the posterior cord. The upper two anterior divisions combine to form the lateral cord, and the anterior division of the lower trunk continues as the medial cord. There are three nerves to remember from the roots. These are the contribution of C5 to the phrenic nerve, the dorsal scapula root from C5, and the long thoracic nerve of Bell. The trunks have two branches from the upper trunk. This is the suprascapular nerve and the nerve to subclavius. The divisions, thank goodness, have no branches whatsoever. And then we have 355 from my mnemonic love playmate. The love for lateral has three branches, which are the lateral pectoral nerve, the musculocutaneous nerve, and the lateral contribution from the lateral cord to the median nerve. The next one, play, P for posterior, love playmate, remember, has five branches. The mnemonic here was stars. Begins with an S, ends with an S. So that's the upper and lower subscapular nerves, the thoracodorsal nerve, the axillary nerve, and the radial nerve. The medial cord, if you'll remember, also has five branches. The ulnar nerve, always think medial and ulnar together, and then the four ends. The medial cutaneous nerve of the arm, the medial cutaneous nerve of the forearm, the medial pectoral nerve, and also the medial contribution from the medial cord to the median nerve. So you see, once you break it down and look for associations, actually, if I dare say it, the brachial plexus is not that bad.